Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Guess what? We are back with the amazing Steve Valentine. Let's get buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. So, what I think is so cool about your career is you're not... You play such diverse characters. Yes. And, um, you know, your video game work, you know, your voice acting work, your on-camera work. What characters are you kind of... I mean, you have, obviously, your work in Dragon Age and yeah. Uncharted, and you've got... Um, you know, what are you drawn to? And and when you're preparing for voice acting work, do you have a different process or preparation than on camera? Um, so, mm, the double-ended question. Mm. Mm. Take whichever well, what you I like. What am I drawn to? I'd like to take the second part first and the mm. first part of the second I'll part take next. Drawn to okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, yes, I, uh, I, I'm drawn to whatever I haven't done or whatever I'm not doing. So if okay. I'm doing comedy, I really want to do a drama. If I'm doing drama, I want to do something funny. You know, yeah. if I'm doing like a very, a very um, controlled, tight character, I want to do something crazy and wild. I, I, um, lately, I've been moving away from uh, the larger characters. You know, I get a lot of offers for like the big, crazy, large characters, and I've done that. And I would really like to do now uh, focus a little bit on something a little realer, more grounded. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, you'll probably see me as, I don't know, Dancing Drag Queen in the next episode of mm -hmm. something You have else. the legs, those long I got, legs. Oh, I do. Actually, I did do the drag queen thing on Hot and Clean. You did? <laughs> yeah, you did. I did. I played, I played uh, so a, the drag queen Jane Leaves, on, <laughs> <laughs> and it was not pretty. Um, <laughs> and I did not shave my legs. Uh, but um, so to answer your question, I, I'm a, like, in the same way that I like to try everything in life, you know, writing, mm -hmm. producing, whatever, uh, I'm, I'm like that with the characters. Um, usually I'm a big believer in just do it. Yeah. And when it comes to voice especially, I'm a big believer in just do it. I feel like in order to sound as spontaneous, and like you guys are way more experienced than I am in voice, I, I, I'm not that experienced, but to me, to be spontaneous, I need to look at the lines and just do them without thinking right. about mm -hmm. it. To, mm -hmm. If I think about it, then, then it becomes um, like I'm trying to I'm trying to do something. Right. Um, and I find so usually most of the time I will read the script once, and then and then uh, mm -hmm. and then just do it. And that really came from when I did Dragon Age, because um, we were doing. I think, I don't know, four, eight thousand, eight thousand lines of dialogue. I don't know how many yeah, lines yeah. of dialogue we yeah. did for the game, but there was no way I could prepare that. Every, you know, the, the right. stack of papers at each session is this thick. Right. There's like eight lines of dialogue on each page. Yeah. You and do the each context one, is. The context, yeah, the guys yeah, on the, the guys up. patched in from Canada telling me the context, mm -hmm. and you just do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's, and, and it's rather freeing actually. Yeah. Um, you don't get locked. The problem with a lot of method acting is you're locked inside your head and I have mm -hmm. to be this. You know, we've got the amazing actor Scott Brick in the studio today. We yes. do, he's right over Scott there. Scott Brick, yes. You're not allowed to speak, otherwise he's you have to pay He's our heckling him. studio yeah. audience. Hi, Scott Brick. <laughs> I, but I would love to know Scott's, Scott's, uh, Scott's techniques for, for voice, but also for acting. And we'll, maybe we'll you come sit on my lap and we'll talk ah, about yeah. it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but everyone has a different process and I guess it depends on, on the role yeah. and what's yeah. necessary. You're King Alistair character in Dragon Age. I him. I mean, he's not just a one-dimensional I love that character guy. because the more I got to know him, which really only got to know him as I was doing the character, was that this was a guy who didn't want to be king and right. was incredibly, uh, f was full of, full of self-doubt. And, and what a great way to play a, a king. Yeah. yeah, as opposed to the yeah. usual bombastic ass yeah. that we that we mm -hmm. see, um, and kind of witty and dry and ironic in the middle of all this insanity. Totally. Um, the, there were certain lines of dialogue that became iconic with the character, um, and he's got an amazing six pack. But were you surprised at all at how theatrical the game is? You know that it's very cinematic. N did well, you expect that? Or this was my first like big role video game, and uh, I didn't know what to expect. Mm. Uh, I, I was uh, blown away when I saw the finished product. Yeah. Um, and um, did you audition for it? Did you? I did. I auditioned for it, and I'd sent in a reading, and um, I didn't get it. Somebody else got it, and then that didn't work out. And then they called me and said, "Can you come in tomorrow or something?" And, and you're like, and uh, like, "For double scale? Yeah, <laughs> yeah double scale. <laughs> not doing it. Or I'm not coming in. <laughs> I'm busy. And, and they, <laughs> I've got 17 commercials running." 
this is mine. Um, and they, they uh, you can anyway, have mine too. Thank God bless you. Mm. But I, uh, that was that was Dragon Age. That's mm. how Dragon Age happened. It was literally just a, you know, you, we made a mistake. Please forgive mm. us and come, yeah. come mm-hmm. do it. But I got to tell you, the fans of the fans of uh, Alistair are amazing. I actually did a bunch of, uh, and I put them on my line for co- my, my my website for a couple of bucks. They did a bunch of ringtones in the voices yeah. for the fans, just because I thought it would be fun. That's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. really cool, man. Um, and uh, it's been it's been an eye opening experience. And I did my first convention uh, last year. Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah, that must have been funky, right? It was great. Well, funky, great. Yeah. It yeah, was yeah, great because yeah. those those places are wild. They're wild, and and the you can see I see people looking at me and then closing their eyes and then listening <laughs> to the voice. <laughs> right, right, and you're like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. So you and Chuck yes. share a very fun little. We dated the same. Oh, oh, no, that's not... No, sorry, another that, story. That, you, oops, yeah. I'm not okay. going to talk about it. <laughs> and it was not me. <laughs> um, <laughs> My God. We, you guys yeah. had not met at that point, no. and you shared this fabulous character I love, the yeah. boots, everything, Derek Jupiter. Yeah. I'm in the band on Disney XD. Yeah. Um, we, came, we, went, we met you at a taping. It was, like, so cool. But let's discuss how you guys are connected. So, um... First of all, let's hear how you got the gig. <laughs> and then we can, how you got and then the we can talk about how I got the okay. gig, because that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, so the Crossing Jordan fan base is 30 to 100. 30 to 100. <laughs> and so this, this series came up called I'm in the Band, and my agent calls me and he says, do you want to, do you want, they, they're interested in you for the role of Derek Jupiter. And I said, I don't want to do a show on Disney. But what I, what, what got me was I read the script yeah. and it was funny and it was so, slightly subversive. Yeah. And I, and I liked the idea of doing this kind of like where the adults are the kids and the kid is the adult. Yeah. And, um, you know, on a completely mercenary level, I thought about the younger audience that I would reach who would now, who are now in college yeah. and who would know me from that. Uh, so I thought, like, uh, demographically, I thought it would be really interesting and, and good for my career. But more than that, it just it was really funny. Yeah. It wasn't your typical kids show. It was actually funny. Yeah. So. And the and premise got, of the show was. The premise of the show is that this is. band, Iron Weasel, mm. uh, who were huge at one point, lost everything and were living in their van. The band uh, van. The band van. <laughs> and uh, cue music video. <laughs> And um, and so their number one fan is this kid, and he, he makes a deal. He says, well, I'll let you live in the house with me and my mom if you let me play in your band. You know, this right, idea right. of being yeah. the, the new guy in the band yeah. that you love, yeah, the rock yeah, star yeah. thing. And um, and as insane as that that setup sounds, it actually kind of works. Yeah. And it's a big cartoon. I mean, it it so, slapstick. Oh, it's it is totally the physical comedy. Was it's hysterical. the physical comedy. Like me, myself, and Steve Full and, and Greg Baker, and and we really had to learn um, the, the the timing of of slapstick comedy, yeah. which mm. is which is accuracy. Yeah. With slapstick has to be absolutely clean and accurate, right. otherwise it's not funny. Yeah. Right. And, um, and it, so it was an incredible education. Yeah. Uh, so I get to play Derek Jupiter, and I've got this amazing wig, right, you know. Long hair. And the wardrobe is fantastic. And these are actually, these the shirt, are, these are, these the are boots, Derek's the jeans. jeans. Yes, those are, no, but totally. those are actually Derek's these jeans. These are Derek's jeans from the show. These are Derek's boots from the totally. show. Because wow. when the show got canceled, Disney called me up, and they said, do you want some of your yeah. clothes? Which they don't give anything away. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. what's the catch? No. But they're like, <laughs> do you want some? And I was like, yeah, I guess this is their way of saying, it ain't coming back. Yeah. Right, right, right. So in lieu of season three, in lieu three, of season three, we're giving we you your moving. entire wardrobe. <laughs> and I bring my car to the studio, and I'm like, I'll take that pair of jeans and maybe that t-shirt. And they were like, No, you don't understand. You can have everything. Wow. And I took. I don't know how many jeans, I was giving jeans and t-shirts out to all my friends. I've got like this leather coat, this leather hat, all these different leather coats that are amazing. That's you know, you know so Chuck Wright. Cool, Chuck, Chuck Wright. Yeah, you know, Chuck, yeah, Chuck, Chuck yeah. Wright. Chuck yeah. wants to borrow one of Derek's leather jackets for one of his shows because it's so cool. Wow. And um, I just got, so I got all this amazing stuff. Anyway, so I would get these letters that would say from fans on the show. And Derek, by the way, is kind of the lead singer. He's the vain one. Yeah, He's yeah, kind yeah. of, you know, the, the band used to be called uh, Derek Jupiter and the guys behind me or something like that. <laughs> the and, guys uh, behind me. Or the other guys or something like that. <laughs> uh, and um, my favorite line is when you first meet him, he says, what an honor it is to have me on the show. Ah! <laughs> and, uh, 
And, I, and so in the show, I get the, I, in real life, I would get mail and saying, we love your hair and we love your singing voice, which was interesting because neither of those were mine. <laughs> and so I felt great. Um, <laughs> and, and so I, they, they said to me, what, can you sing? And I said, I can sing, but not like, like I don't have a rock scream or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So they said, well, just come. You know, we, have to, we have to give you a, a, a record contract uh, in case you sing something in the series that becomes a hit so that we have you under contract. Right. So I got a Hollywood Records record contract wow. and I can't really sing. So this is, so good. This That's is Hollywood. Hollywood. That's we Hollywood. Like right? you, yeah. That is Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... Um, and so uh, they said, but just come in and sing for us. And I said, I, do, I really don't want to. And they were like, no, you have to. I said, I don't want, I don't want to come in and sing for you guys. Just take it back. We need to know what your singing voice sounds like-ish so we can kind of match it. So I remember going in with a, it's the boom box and, a, and, and everyone from Disney was there. And it was the most humiliating Oof. three minutes of my life. What did you sing? I don't remember, but I remember that the karaoke track was a little bit too high. Yeah. And, um, Would you like to do it now? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. please welcome. But we have that footage from Disney. Thank you. <laughs> I believe we have it here. Uh, anyway, so there, I'll never forget everyone's face in the room that day. The, the, you could see the live tour just drifting away. <laughs> the disappointment and the horror. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. Don't oh, make eye contact. And me leaving the room. Oh, were you afraid that they wouldn't give you the role if you... No, I just was just yes, it's like, why? why are you making me Don't do this? Don't make me do yeah. this. And they just, anyway. It's like an initiation. And I was devastated. I was like, God, I wish I'd really took singing lessons when mm. I was a kid because we could have done something. But listen, I will tell you, cool. as a former professional dancer, your, your physicality was fantastic. I got the rock moves down, right? I got fantastic. the rock moves down. And that Big is, time. I mean, Thank the you. singing is very hard because I, you know, but but the da you really in so that is props to you. On Which that. is exhausting, by yeah. the way. I know you spend many hours in front of the mirror going like, you can move, honey. <laughs> Manga, that was very good. No, it was Thank really, you. really You're good. Right, show me a couple of great moves. This microphone spin move, oh, my first nice. right. spinning yeah. move, right. which I just loved. I did it all the time on the show, and no, then so, of course so there's was... quite a bit of Stephen Tyler in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, band van. In the band van song, not the one in the video, but when we did it in the show, I was watching it the other day because what's awesome is my kid, who's now five, it's her favorite show. Wow. And I've got video of her just laughing her ass off. Uh, but that was very Steven Tyler. Anyway, yeah. to cut a long story too late, short, um, I got this tape. They said, this is the guy who's going to be your singing voice. Mm. Really? Yeah, they were like, this is the guy's voice. And you have to like lip sync to this song. Um, I say tapes, it was a CD. Do you um, remember the song? Uh, Weasel Rock You. Okay. Wasn't it? So Weasel, was the title track. Mm. The title track. I'm pretty sure it was the title track. Yeah. We, we shot the pilot twice, so I'm a little right. confused about where. Um, and it was, and I was, and the, the voice was amazing. You're like, oh wow, I saw I'm like, the voice good. is, yeah, this <laughs> is like, good. I and I'm literally driving it. to the studio. Lip syncing in my car, you know. You're this. very good at the lip syncing and, too. And, yeah, and who is and who was the guy that did the singing voice? Well, we'll find <laughs> out next week Bye. on VO. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not this guy do right here. Oh, so this, is, this is this is the guy right here, and it is. If you listen, I mean, talk about capturing uh, the the '80s. Um, and 90s kind of like rock mm -hmm. shred scream just awesome awesome well, voice the songs it are really written by synonymous. David and Stacey Wilde absolutely yes. amazing, are amazing. David, love you, and David and Stacey are incredible they wrote incredible songs absolutely incredible. and then Chucky e. D over here I feel, yeah. like, I feel like I should stand in front of you and then you should sing the song and I'll lip sync it for the folks at home. Yeah, no, let's not oh, do that. Let's not do that. You can find everything on That'll YouTube. That'll be on Extra Features. Uh, There's sure. a lot on YouTube, like all the videos. Yeah, everything, everything is on there. So yeah. check it out. Right, so, so, so wait, so, 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 so wait, okay, so anyway, enough about me. <laughs> That's words you never thought you'd hear. But the um, show is about you, so it's no, okay. enough. Um, I need a breather. I need a breather. Um, how did you get the part? How oh did, my God! How did they come to? How did they find you? Because it was your voice, and I say this with all honesty, is yeah. so beautiful. Well, it's such that, a man. unique voice. Mm -hmm. It's like you can you can hear like a million rock rock groups, and then go, "That's Chuck." Like your voice is so distinctive, Thank and you've got you. that high shred squeal. Squ 
It's like the uh, yeah. texture what? and the power. Yeah. But the well, hu- yeah. yeah. Check this out. This is a really funny story and, and kind of weird. So my friend, Fred Corey, who's actually the drummer for the band called Cinderella. Yes, right. And so he was doing some songs for Disney and for this show particularly. And he called me up and he goes, hey, man, will you come over to my studio and sing a couple of these demos that I've created uh, to send for Disney for this new show that they're doing called I'm with or in the band. <laughs> um, and I'm like, yeah, sure, man. So I go over to his studio and he, he, you know, I learn a couple of these quick little songs and I ended up singing them. And then he sent them to Disney and then Disney said, uh, so who's the singer? And the, the songs were not to showcase the singer, it was to showcase right, the songs. Right. And he goes, uh, well, that's my friend Chuck, uh, but what about the songs? <laughs> and, and they're like, uh, does he live in town? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he lives in Sherman Oaks, but what about the songs? Uh, is he available? <laughs> so long story short yeah. is that, you know, Freddie calls and he goes, hey man, you know, mm-hmm. they love your voice. And... Um, so the one of the producers of the show called me into another studio to sing another song, and so I did. And then they said, "You, they want you to be the voice of the rock star, dude." And I'm like, "Yeah, this is awesome!" Right? <laughs> so I recorded everything right here in my yeah. studio. Oh, did you do it here? Like on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I, gra- on a I literally Sunday. grabbed my. Check this out. It's a great story for you voiceover people out there because. I knew it was Disney XD, so right. I knew that the character, the singing, couldn't just be a great singer. It had to have a little bit of character in it yeah. sure. to give it life for the kids. So sure. I did this little character thing, which was great because that's what they loved about it. I go, oh my God, it's got like a like a little character thing about it. In fact, when I didn't do it, they'd be like, make it a little bit more like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, fine. I have to redo the whole what thing. So what, what was the character but thing that you did? It was How just, would you describe well, it? Well, it's just like, you know, rocking out, you yeah, know, yeah. wow. It just had like this extra like life. Like a little you know zany I mean? edge about yeah, it. He was like wild, like you were yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. it totally so, fit. So yeah. exactly, and they loved that. It wasn't just g- good, it was just like crazy. Um, so, but the funny thing is I tracked everything on uh, a U87 for the voice over people out there, uh, a Neumann U87 microphone. Okay. And they couldn't understand what I was saying because there was this rock music behind it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, hmm. And I was being as clear as I could possibly be singing supersonic high notes. Yeah. So then I'm like, let me try recording it with the Sennheiser 416, which everybody in the voiceover industry mm-hmm. uses yeah. because it cuts through production like a freaking knife. Right. And so then I sang everything with that, bingo. They understood every mm-hmm. single word Isn't now. That interesting. So yeah, it made you- my life a whole, thank you Sennheiser. Yeah. Thank you, Sennheiser. Thank you, Sennheiser. You had your closet of mics, and you were like, hmm. And you're talking on a Sennheiser lovely. Am I talking on a Sennheiser, and you don't have a sponsor? We love it. No commercial. Yeah. We love you, Sennheiser. So, Um, anyways, then I got the opportunity, of course, to work with you know Stacy and David, who are amazing writers. Yeah, they were great. And Stacy would be like, "Hey, Chuck, you know," and she'd like do this rough, you know, kind of vocal on it, and like, "But do do your thing, you know." And I'd do my thing, and then I'd hear back all done, and I was like, "Wow, I'm so." Oh, cool! You know, it was really, <laughs> songs really are amazing. My, so I think good. one of my favorites is, uh, well, I think Band Van was great. Uh, great. Face Down and a Plate of oh. Nachos. Oh, that's God, good. That one of the so greatest good. power ballads power yeah. ballad. of yes. all time. Like yeah. I cracked up on that. In fact, if you guys go to YouTube and just put yes. in. I'm in the band uh, Face Down in a Plate of the Nachos. Oh. Yes, it's a power Oh, ballad. and your performance of it. I mean, it's just, it really is like, <laughs> I mean, I remember when you recorded that, I, I couldn't, I couldn't wait. And then when I saw you, and like, it just, it yeah. is, it's like the most ludicrous power ballad. Totally, it is, totally. But it so works. fantastic. So well. And now, hold on. Yeah. Back to you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you had mentioned at some point that you had some story about your wife being on set, or? Yeah, so <laughs> I when I first started doing I'm in the band, yeah. I just started dating, uh, uh, Ina, my, my wife, or as I refer to her affectionately, the Russian. The Russian. The Russian. And, uh, <laughs> and I, um, uh, she proposed to me, and uh, and which is what Russians do. They just don't have time. On the to set work. of I'm in the band. No, actually, okay. uh, there's, uh, somewhere else. <laughs> and I said, I said, you can't do that. You can't propose to me. I'm the man. I'm supposed to get down on my hands and knees and do, 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 do. My answer will be uh, in the form of a proposal. If I decide I want to get married, then I'll propose back. You gotta let me think about this because I've already been married once. I'm not so sure I want to get married a second time. And you know, she was, and uh, of course, I was incredibly flattered, but also kind of dealing with like baggage, right? Yeah. So um, I decide I'm going to do it. I'm going to propose to her. But how am I going to propose to her? 
she said to me, if you do propose to me, <laughs> which is, I love this, if you do decide to propose to me, don't do it in public. <laughs> Because I'll say no. I'll she she says, I'm just, I want this to be like a quiet, intimate moment, if right. you do. And I was like, okay. So I wrote a scene for the taping night of I'm in the Band. It was an extra yes. scene that we, we, we tagged on to the end of, um, of, the, of the shoot night. And we were live studio audience. Yeah. And, and the scene was, and we introduced it as uh, we, have a, we have a pickup scene that we, from another episode that we have to shoot right now. And everyone, the actors, the, the crew, the director, the producers, the Disney executives, everybody was on board to wow, let me propose to my cool. wife, surprise her on set, pull her out of the audience and propose to her right then and there. Wow. And, uh, and it, was, it was, and I've got it, and here's the thing. So we're doing the scene. And, uh, and the scene is something like, Derek, you know, we think we found the perfect girl for you. And I'm like, no, never, couldn't possibly happen. And some bad jokes that go back and forth. And then they go, no, wait here. And they go into the, the audience and they pull Ina out of the audience. <laughs> and she's like, what are you, what's, and they pull her onto the set. And, and then I drop down in, and I propose to her in the best hair and makeup of my life. Oh. And, um, <laughs> and, and, cause that's what's important. And, yes. and, and it was all shot on HD, four HD so cameras cool. on Disney's dime. Magic is real. Magic is real. <laughs> that, well you know played. what I'm saying? Um, and, and I've got the video of it and it's amazing. And the oh only person God. who isn't crying is my wife. Cause she's just like, <laughs> she's like stunned. Everyone else is like oh. bawling. And it was it was just the most yeah. amazing thing. That's and so cool. There was this moment where the studio audience realizes that what they're seeing is real life mm -hmm. and not a scene from the show, and yeah. then they got on board. You know what I mean? Wow. It was uh, yeah. I'll never forget. Way to not do it publicly. Moment. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, so I did mean, she that's kick me. your ass after that? Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> and has yeah. been ever since. And has been ever since. <laughs> yes. That's, funny. that's fantastic. We're that's going beautiful. To She's lovely. She's such a wonderful, wonderful. She's amazing. Woman. Yeah. yeah. She really is. Yeah. So, Steve. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good, wait, do that again. Good do that again. Do that again. So, Steve. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't quite as good. One more time. Yeah. So, Steve. Uh, yes. <laughs> Is that the, <laughs> what's the sl uh, slapstick version? Okay. So, Steve, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Yes? <laughs> oh, no, he's going to spit. No, you better so, not. Steve! <laughs> Don't swallow that. <laughs> You've had way too many of those. Pat Bailey would be proud. Sorry, no spit takes. Okay, uh, such a beautiful set. I wouldn't do don't it. Don't spit on our Sennheiser microphone. Yes, they will get it very. Can take it. They will get upset. Exactly. <laughs> Sennheiser. Waterproof. You can spit on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what should we do? Yes. Shockingly. Shockingly. You. Yeah. Have a serious writing career. Uh, you've uh, done a graphic novel. Yeah. You are uh, an executive producer. You've done movies for Hallmark Channel. Yeah. So tell us what's so, going uh, on. Uh, with well, all I've always that. written. I've always written things in yeah. notebooks and just kind of ideas and stuff. I never wrote a story. And then we were doing Crossing Jordan, and I was um, I had an idea for an episode, and I was, and I told the producers, and, and Tim Kring said that's pretty good. Why don't you write that with Scott Williams? Because I've never written anything before. Mm -hmm. And so we wrote this entire episode, and I got to see it come alive with actors speaking my words. And I got, I like this. I thought, I like, I like this, I, the idea of this. Um, and so when Crossing Jordan ended, um, I thought it'd be nice to create something where you, you have a piece of, a piece of the show. Because that was yeah. six years of my life, but I don't have a piece mm -hmm. of the show, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So create a series, I can have a piece of the show. And, so, um, and I was... Um, I was at a BAFTA meeting and this woman who I'd never seen before at BAFTA came up to me and said, um, so what are you going to do now that Crossing Jordan's over? And I was getting a bit, I was like, I don't know, I'll forget something. <laughs> you, you know? And she goes, you know what, you should, you should um, I just read a book called The Gourmet Detective and you'd be perfect for the lead in it and um, you should read the books, they're really, really good. Anyway, I'll have to go. Uh, she, she mentioned something about you should write it and write it and sell it as a series or yeah. something. And then she vanished into the crowd. Wow. And I never saw her. I never seen Was her she again. real or not? We don't I know. don't know. You decide. It, <laughs> this, this is what's weird. I, I, I went home and I said, to, um, I said to my wife, I was like, I, this is so weird. I, this woman just kind of basically told me I need to you know, do this, write this series. With, yeah. 
So I looked up the books and I read them and they were good. They weren't great. They're were a bit dry, but they were, they were, it was a really good, it was a good idea. It was a guy who's a food expert who solves crimes, like murder he cooked, essentially. And it was perfect for what USA was at that point. Uh, Monk was coming to an end. And I thought, well, this, is a, this, is, this could be the perfect series, figure out a way to do it as a series for them. So then um, I'm like, well, how do I get the rights to the book? Um, so I just Google agent for Peter King and it comes up. So I write the guy an email and I'm like, Jeff, my name's Steve Valentine. I'm an actor. I don't have the money to pay you like $100,000 for like a book rights. So, you know, but if you let me have the rights to the eight novels, if I can sell it as a series, you know, you'll get like a, we'll, we'll, we'll do a deal where you'll get like a nice chunk of money for Peter. And he said, well, I would love to do something for Peter. As it turns out, the author was in his late 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, so he gave me the rights for a thousand bucks. Oh, eight nice. books. Wow. Eight books. And, um, and then I, I thought, okay, well, I've never written a pilot before. I need to get someone, I need to get a partner. This is the way you do it. You've got to always align this yourself. This is the way with, you do it. This is the way you do it. You have to align yourself with someone bigger, better, and more connected. Yeah. Always. That's, mm -hmm. There's no point in being the biggest person in the room. That's bullshit. You've got to just be, always be the smallest person in the room, and you'll learn and progress. So I met this guy uh, um, at a party who was dating a friend of mine who was a, uh, the director and executive producer of Monk. And he directed me in an episode of another series years ago, Randy Zest, great guy. But I don't have his phone number. <laughs> so and I, we're back. But I know. <laughs> I'm but checking I, my call sheets and. <laughs> yeah, I don't have his phone number. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so I know he's shooting Monk at uh, uh, Paramount. So I literally call Paramount Studios, and uh, Paramount Studios. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to speak to Randy Zisk, please, in Monk's office, in the Monk office. Just hold on, please. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Monk. Can we help you? Yeah, this is Steve Valentine calling for Randy Zisk. Hold on a second. This is Randy. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Randy. So I'm just like, Randy, you're, you're dating a friend of mine, Sarah. We met at the party. He said, yeah, I know who you are. He said, how are you? I said, listen, I said, I've got this idea for a series. It's crazy, but I know Monk is coming to an end, and maybe we could sit and talk about it. You could come on, write it with me, executive producer, and create it. And he said, well, he did this great thing. He said, uh, uh, come, come over tomorrow, we're filming, we'll have lunch. He said, I've got to tell you I'm really busy, I have a lot on my plate, which is Hollywood speak for I'm probably not going to do it. But, but I'll yeah. give you a lunch. He was nice enough to give yeah. me his time. Sure. Told him the idea. Which, which that's even hard to come by yeah, right yeah, now. That's, yeah. yeah, right? I mean, yeah. that's yeah. really hard. So I appreciated that and I went over there and um, he liked the idea and he jumped on board. Wow. And so we, the first people that we pitched it to was USA and they bought it. And uh, we had one extra writer, David Breckman, and uh, the three of us went about creating the pilot. And it was really cool. It was a very cool pilot. Like we basically, in the end, very little of the book was in the pilot. We made it, uh, we updated it, um, and USA uh, almost went for it. They didn't, they didn't quite go for it. Uh, but I, I had such a great time writing that. Um, and then, uh, uh, I, I just kept getting the rights back. I just kept getting yeah. the rights back. Oh, I don't want to let this go. And I've sold it twice since. Finally, we sold it to Hallmark Channel yeah. two years ago. As, They're uh, on all the time. Yeah, as a series of uh, mystery movies. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which I'd never thought of doing originally. I thought we were going to yeah. create our own series. But li the movies are pretty uh, based on each novel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, loosely based because of budget. Of course. <laughs> but, um, but still, they, they've done a very good job. And I didn't write that. The Gourmet Detective, in the end, uh, was written by somebody else. Uh, I executively produced it. Um, but it was great to get that up on the air, you know. And then uh, that experience, as I was doing that, I thought, what else could I do? Well, I'm really interested with this idea of Harry Houdini and Arthur Conan Doyle, that they were friends together. And um, what if they, uh, I thought, well, what if they were like the Mulder and Scully of the 1920s? What if they investigated psychics and, uh, you know, because they're such great, characters in history, yeah. their friends are famous, we could see the subculture of America and England and we can kind of, the flu epidemic, all these crazy things that were happening in the 20s leading up to Houdini's murder, because there are people who believe he was murdered. Mm -hmm. So I thought this would be a really nice, interesting, dark series. So um, I'm introduced to a guy called Paul Char, who's an amazing writer, who's one of the writers of Children of Men, and together we create this series and we sell it to Sci-Fi. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sci-Fi doesn't go to script, in the end, they weren't sure they wanted to do period. So then we sell it again 
to NBC. You know you did not. <laughs> Twice we sold this, this series. We sell it to NBC. They, they ask for the pilot. We write the pilot. This is 2011. The only other period show on was um, on AMC, uh, uh, Mad Men. Mad Men. Mm -hmm. and, and they were like, we, you know, we like the pilot, but there's nothing, we, there's nothing to program it against or with. And we're not so sure that the young generation is going to want to watch a period piece. Right. Mm. <laughs> Cut years later. Yeah. It, everybody's doing period. Totally. Right. And someone else did the Houdini Conan Doyle story. And the problem was Fox did it. Um, and they did. They had a slightly different take on it. But the idea that these two were investigative psychics yeah. was in their yeah. series as well. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So it was, it was, it was, I, I was, I felt great that the idea actually got made. Right. Even though it wasn't my version. Uh, uh, so that was good. But I was kind of bummed that it also, you know, mm. that it got made. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Actor, voice actor, dancer, silver. Silver Solar. aficionado. Silver aficionado. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> what is this stuff? This is a mint It's like talent on top of uh, talent. You're like a freaking the Big Mac of freaking talent. <laughs> And uh, we have a few pieces we'd like you to appraise if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Oh. And, now, and now the great thing is now we have a series at um, uh, TNT that I created with another friend of mine, Chris Philpott. And it's called 40 Elephants. And it is about the most ruthless gang in London in 1850. Wow. And it's a true story. Um, and uh, the 40 Elephants were the most ruthless female gang female gang to mm. ever hit London, all women, um, and, uh, and it's kind of like Orange is the New Black if the prison if was they London. Were in yeah. if, right. if they weren't if they in were, prison. If they got out. <laughs> if they got out. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it, it's really exciting. So uh, we, just turned in the, um, we just turned in the pilot to TNT. Fantastic. Yay. Man. Congratulations, Thank buddy. You. So we're gonna look much for that. good stuff. Lots Magic of girls being cast. We love that, right? Yes. Look at you. You're going to be like... The ambassador to Girls, Hollywood. Girls, I just, I can't get you another part. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So finally, we're going to do something that is a little more visual. A little vis for the cam. A little vis. What we call a little the zhuzh vis. Eye candy. A little magical eye candy. Okay. Ooh, this nice. is actually from the show. This is a piece that I do to music. Yes. But um, we'll just kind of do some kind of rhythm beats and maybe some beats as we do this. Uh, it's a little thing called White Out. <laughs> Check it out. Watch that three. Just what? Did you see that? They just wiped out. The problem is that's it. That's it. Keep it going. That's one. It fits with the mouth on the <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice crotch shot you got going in there. Yeah. There we go. There you go. There's another one. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Two, three. It's gone. It's one's gone. Yeah, one's gone. What the? Okay, so listen. Check it out. These eight, these threes. So let's bring them back really fast. One at a time. Okay. Here we go. You can drop your hand. I think I can do this without. One. Two. No, no, no. Now the last one is the hardest one to do. Is that true, Steve? Yes, it really is. Because I don't know how to lie and I don't know how to rap and I'm making this up and that's why it sounds crap. So keep your eyes off the little white card. One, two, three. There you go. That's it. Thank you. Wow. wow. And that's totally a, the song is available Holy on iTunes with the show. Yes, God. I'll be lip syncing to Chuck's version. Seriously? I just want to point that Dude, out. Dude, <laughs> that was so much fun. I can't even believe it. <laughs> that was great. That this was Thank you so much. My gosh. I mean, seriously, you you can't even. Oh. Gifted. Fantastic. My pleasure. This is my Fantastic. pleasure. Fantastic. Yes. Check out Steve Valentine Live.com. Steve Valentine Live.com. Thank you. Practices. And keep up with Steve on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for updates. And please take it. Take it out there, dude. We're you, gonna take it out there. We're gonna to keep watching. Listen, the live show. We want to take it. We want to take it, it on tour. We want to so hit places. Special. Take it to New York. Take it abroad. It's su you're such an amazing Absolutely. storyteller. Thank you. And then everything else woven into it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little card trick. Ready? I wonder what these things are. Is this? Ah. Is this? Uh, what is this? Magic against We're humanity. We're gonna close out the show by putting you in a box. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're gonna slice you up. The first time. <laughs> 
Wait a minute. Magicians pick- are like creepy, right? Wait, they do nothing but like destroy women. Do you think there's something in that? Like cut women in half, you know, exactly. they stab Saws, them, swords, they saw them, fire. they fire them. Yeah. I don't find you creepy at all. Mm, thank you. Yeah, no, just wait till he saws till you up. Till just then. <laughs> till just that point. Anyway, mm, it's this the, is like an observation I was just thinking about. Yes. Pick a card, any card. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we're going to read what it says. <laughs> we're going to read what Okay. <laughs> I'll do what you guys did. No, I don't want that one. No, I don't want that one. <laughs> not that one. No, wait. Yeah, not that Chuck one. is like a magician's nightmare. <laughs> no, I'll wait, take that I don't one. Re- no, because well, no, I, I have got, ADD, so I, got, I changed I got, my okay, mind. No. no, and then he'll say, oh, I don't remember what my card was. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. You love that. Was that your like card? the Taylor uh, Clover? I don't know. <laughs> Do I read a, it? This is a mystery question. Oh, okay. Mm. Would you stop eating all junk food to live five years longer? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like Let's that. Let's do another question. question. Yeah, because you don't a... even eat junk food anymore. <laughs> Pick another one. I actually have do? it in the car because okay. I'm starving. <laughs> I'm going to have junk food forever, but there's a bag on my... Of course you okay. would. I mean, who would say no? Yeah, all right. right? Pick another card, any Clearly, card. Clearly, Big Ma- <laughs> McDonald's is not going to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> After that. No. Okay. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Who? Ow. Whom Whom? would you like to trade places with for one month? Let's say it could be living a or dead. Months. It's such an interesting time frame. I know, right? Well, you could always go back to you. We could say it could be living or dead. I, well, then I would be tra- dead for a month, you mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change no, places with Queen Victoria. <laughs> That's a hell of a crit. Hey, smarty pants. <laughs> I'm going to spend some time. I thought you might say Houdini. That's why I gave you the out. I don't want to be Houdini. That guy had so many issues. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that guy had a lot of issues. Totally. I mean, he was well, just like, I'm the best. Like, Did you know that Houdini used to have his name carved into his tires so that when he drove around town in the dirt roads, it just his. said Houdini for miles? No. Yeah, isn't that wow. that's, that's awesome and awful. Who yeah. would I want to change yeah, places for with? One month. Yes. We're not assuming oh, that you I mean, don't like so your many, life. We're not, no, I know. Do you want a different like, card? You could say something like Justin Timberlake, or you could say something like, um, who would I want to be for a month? Well, I wouldn't mind being president for a month right now. <laughs> <laughs> That. I just don't want Cheers Trump. To that. I just don't want Trump doing my show. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that puts us in a difficult position. Yeah, no, no, I wasn't going to do political humor. Ah, uh, political humor. No, I'd like to be Chuck because I want to sing like that for oh, a while. Oh, get out of here! Uh, I do. I want to sing like that. I want to get up on stage and go, "Sweetie Wee. pie." <laughs> How do you do it? How do you? Okay, okay, voiceover lesson. How do you sing like that and not completely mess up your vocal cords? Um, why? <laughs> <laughs> you just, you, you warm up, you have to warm up, you have to be very, very hydrated, drink a lot of water. Right. And uh, you don't do it for too long because you'll blow yourself out. If you sing like that without warming up, your cords are like mm. just like, because when, on- when you're singing rock in particular, it's so aggressive that you're literally, your chords are going like that. Right. I mean, they're slamming together when you're going like, wow, you know, doing all that stuff and adding rasp and all that. So you got to be very careful. Don't try this at home. But, it, but I look at these guys that do like two hour concerts because I, I, yeah. I would do a song. But like, how long have they been doing that for? Aha. It's, you know, they're muscles. And so right, they're, so it's just, absolutely. it's all trained. But so, not everyone absolutely. can sustain it for... 50 years. Yeah, because you know? yeah. so I mean, I would are... do like, I, I would do a song on the show, I'm, and admittedly, I wasn't singing, I was lip syncing, but like yeah. two minutes after start performing that, and yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I gotta sit down. Well, yeah. you I'm were doing the physicality though, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. you were yeah. moving. So I look, at, I look at someone like Steven Tyler, who goes yeah. on stage for like two it's hours, incredible. three hours, and yeah. he's singing like that at the top of his voice, yeah. and he's doing all those movements. Yeah. Now awesome. I know why they're skinny. Right, he's, right, right. he's worked his chords so strong, man, there's just nothing he can do to like do anything to him. They're just like, Solid. So you're lucky. So I, I, either, your, yeah. either your chords just destroy, get wrecked, or yeah. or, or they become this kind of worn, me some well-worn magic, instrument. Uh, I'll it's teach a deal, you man. Freaking singing right. stuff. Yeah. You have I, to throw hundred dollar bills at him. He deal, likes that. deal, deal, deal. Um, uh, Excellent. Um, quick quick uh, question: If you could leave our viewers with yes a little nugget of advice about life, career, performing, what would you say? I would say. You know, I heard this thing the other day that that, that uh, in order, you just have to do it. And I know it sounds like a Nike commercial, but they hit the button on the head. If you want to do something, 
it's not going to get done until you get off your butt, you leave the house and you do it. And, and I'm a, a huge believer. Don't, there are people who will say you have to train and train and train and train and train and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And then at some point you're going to be ready. You're going to feel like you're ready. And that's when you go and do those things. That's not how, that's not how life works. There are people who, who leave college halfway through the, you know, they're doing drama and a bunch of other things and, and they get a role in a television series and they become huge stars and they want, they didn't really train, you know, and, and there are people who just, they have an innate talent and innate gift to go and just jump in the deep end and learn as you go, because there is no better, I think, no, I think that there, there's no better way of learning anything than actually doing it. And it's brutal, and it's hard, and you'll have failure, mm -hmm. right? But that failure will mean something. It won't be some guy in a classroom going, do it again. It'll, it'll mean something because it will be life-changing. So my advice to everybody is do what I do. Just do it. Wow. Steve Valentine, ladies Steve and gentlemen. Steve Valentine, we you're hope the out. best. Absolutely. We wish you huge abundance. You're always welcome here. Thanks, Thank Scott you Brick, so who, much. who laughed at so Scott much. Yes, Brick. yes, yes. Thank you, Scott, <laughs> for being again. such a great live audience. Our lovely and talented live audience. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, for all you guys out there, we're going to be back next week with another show. Yeah. Uh, so please tune in. And until then, we'll see you later. But hey, don't Just forget to. Just do it. Yes, check us out, youtube.com. Um, and uh, on our website, and uh, which is Via Buzz Weekly, and iTunes, and, and the, the app. app. We're all over. They're everywhere. Follow us all. Steve Valentine. On Bye. Facebook, Twitter, Bye. Instagram. Bye, guys. Wow. Hey, I'm Steve Valentine. I just got buzzed by Chuck and Stacy, and I said bye. Well, that concludes our two-part episode with Steve Valentine. Amazing. Uh, I gotta say, I, mean, I was blown away. Blown away. When you're that close to what he does, it really, it's just. My gosh. Your brain just I'll can't tell, even. Yeah, absolutely. If you can get, catch his show. Yes. Do whatever you can to get there and do it, even if you don't live in LA. Yeah, SteveValentineLive.com right? to get tickets. And also, you know, hopefully he'll take it out on the road and you'll get to see it. Absolutely. Um, but check him out online. And if you ever get to the Magic Castle or Vegas, it's worth it. He's absolutely. incredible. Absolutely. Hey, you know what, Chuck? What? Now, now you, you see us, us and now, now you, you don't. don't. We could do magic too. <laughs> Ish. Hey, you guys, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget, we're on iTunes and subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. Leo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Set Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosVetRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time, and remember, you always have time for a little buzz.